portion of the news brought to you by McDonald's. McDonald's, I'm loving it. The Department of Labor has intervened following a barrage of calls to its hotline after Diamonds International sought to change the employment contracts of some 75 employees following the minimum wage increase on August 15th. Director of Labor Robert Farkasen says employees complained they were threatened that their positions would be terminated if they did not agree to the new terms. An allegation the department has since investigated if employees signed the contract, he says, they would have been having to make a minimum quota before commission was even paid, which was cause for concern because employees would take home less than before the minimum wage increase. Their take home par package was a combination of the minimum wage plus a sales commission based on the amount of sales they have. After the 15th, um, we confirmed that Diamonds International did indeed comply with the minimum wage order and they increased the minimum wage um, as outlined in, in the law. However, uh, Diamonds International subsequently um, asked employees to sign a new con contract of employment, which changed the commission structure. Fakerson says an employee's wage cannot be changed without their written permission, which is the reason he believes the company would have taken this approach. The department, he says, is in discussions with the company and its attorneys and hopes to resolve the matter soon. He says if some employees sign the contract and new hires are compensated by the new terms, it would mean a violation of the equal play provision of the Employment Act. However, Farkasen says the actions of Diamond Internationals could set a very dangerous precedent. It can pave the way for other employers in this country to unilaterally vary the terms and conditions of employment as a result of the increase in the minimum wage. Increase of the minimum wage is critically important for those, that group of workers who since 2002 have been making um, about $150 a week. Based on the numbers from the National Insurance Board, we estimate that almost 7,000 employees' salaries would have to be increased um, as a result of the increase in minimum wage. Uh, any attempt to unilaterally vary the terms of conditions employ of employment of this group of workers to cause them to take home less pay will be morally wrong. Um, if it would be a, a legal battle, it's something each case would have to be weighed on its own merit. The National Emergency Management Agency, or NEMA, introduced a new emergency flag warning system which issues alerts for impending disasters. NEMA's First Assistant Secretary, Crystal Glinton, said the flags initially will be posted at NEMA's Gladstone Road headquarters, but in order for residents to become familiar with them, they will be eventually posted throughout the country at prominent buildings. We deal with comprehensive disaster management, um, cyclones, or any incident that may occur. So we use the green flag saying that we are monitoring the situation. We then go, and that's a caller level one. We have something that we call then a level two, where we then become partially activated, and that is a situation is then considered a threat, and then we would use the yellow flag. And at that time also, if we're talking about cyclones, an alert could be issued by the Med Department stating that a cyclone can affect the country within 60 hours. We then go to a level three, where we activate it, and then you will see the orange flag. It means that emergency conditions exist. At that point, she explained that the Met Office would issue a watch indicating that a tropical cyclone will affect the country in 48 hours. Ultimately, the red flag being posted is the highest alert of the warning system. The Prime Minister becomes involved and the emergency support function groups, because we have the other agencies who are also part of this, are required to report to the National Emergency Operations Center. So we just don't think of NEMA at that time, but we become fully activated and become the Emergency Operations Center. The Met Department would then would have issued a warning stating that a tropical cyclone will affect the country within 36 hours. Recognizing the value of protecting natural resources for the benefits of Bahamians today and Bahamians in the future, the government again pledged its commitment to doing so by designating several more marine protected areas, including islands such as Abaco, Acklands, Crooked Island, Grand Bahama, Mayaguana, Great Exuma, and here in New Providence. 
Minister of the Environment and Housing, the Honorable Kenrid Dorsett, says the government, with the help of stakeholders, will continue to preserve the environment. Today, we have set the foundation for the protection of approximately 7.5 million acres or 3 million hectares of land, near shore, and marine environment. This includes the new San Salvador National Parks, which were announced in April of this year, and in total exceeds the target of 2.5 million hectares set out for our Jeff full-sized MPA project. The Bahamas committed to the Caribbean Challenge Initiative in 2008 to protect 20% of its near shore and marine environment by the year 2020. To date, the country has been able to achieve 10%. It's been a long time, but environmental stakeholders say it's a step in the right direction and they couldn't be more proud. It signifies a great commitment by the government of the Bahamas to ensure that we protect what we at the National Trust and many Bahamians mm -hmm. cherish so dearly our environment. This is another giant leap that is solidifying again that the Bahamas is really showing the rest of the region and the world this is how you get it right. This is what you do when you really want to be serious about your marine environment and protecting what it is that makes you special as a country. These new marine protected areas are critically important in protecting our fisheries, our tourism industry, and um, our islands, and, and our way of life. This portion of the news was brought to you by McDonald's. McDonald's, I'm loving it. A major international freedom fighter and champion of women's rights is visiting the capital to participate in celebrating the Women's Awards Foundation. She's the daughter of the former Archbishop of Cape Town, South Africa, His Grace Desmond Tutu. Clint Watson spoke with Mrs. Tutu and the Foundation's past honorees on highlighting the achievements of women. The challenges of growing black and female in apartheid South Africa has led Natombi Naomi Tutu to become a human rights activist. Ms. Tutu is a third child of retired Anglican Archbishop of Cape Town, South Africa, Archbishop Desmond and Nomalizo Leah Tutu. She's in the Bahamas to receive a prestigious international award at a government house, but she couldn't help but share her passion about the importance of equality for women, especially at a time when the Bahamas is seeking to hold a referendum on this very same issue. Inequality does is that it closes off opportunities for individuals, for women, but then it also closes off those opportunities for the rest of the country. Because if I cannot reach my full potential, you don't know as a nation what it is that you're missing out from that young girl who is not able to finish her education or who is closed out from internship opportunities or who even is not able to walk safely in, in her own country because of violence against women. So when we talk about laws about equality, I would hope that people recognize that what it is is about building the nation. Tutu will receive the Woman of Distinction Award at the Celebration of Women International Annual Awards. She'll be the keynote speaker at the presentation of the awardees at Government House on Wednesday evening. Being honored is, is always an amazing thing to, to be recognized and, and it always makes me actually feel very small because because when I look at the women who have been honored before and the women who are being honored at, at the same time as I am. The reasons they pick various women from the country um, is because they're involved in community work and um, soul saving and all sorts of things. And all I could say was that I've contributed in the area of protocol and etiquette and continue to do so. And so it did make me feel special. There are many who may not ever be recognized because it's the one thing, um, there are persons who he has brought in from the family islands who no one may have recognized to have made such contribution in their own little island. Besides Wednesday's presentation of honorees at Government House, a number of activities have been planned for the month, climaxing with the main awards presentation during the beginning of October. Clint Watson, ZNS Network News. It's the southernmost island of the Bahamas, and residents there are on the A-list for the newest game in television services. In tonight's BTC Island Connection, Keishla Adley tells us 
how one Iguanian businesswoman is reacting to finally having access to what has so far been an elusive amenity. It's time for the BTC Island Connection. BTC every day. Cynthia Harris has earned the right to take a load off. When she's not busy in the kitchen, she's in her yard. This a uh, tea bush, I call it tea bush tea. Very it does have a nice tea. smell. What's uh -huh. it for? Tea, just like how you have Lipton tea in the bag. Uh -huh. You get tea, tea bush. And if you thought she was purely a domestic, well, guess again. What did you do in here? To do up, I just had somebody to help me hold it up mm -hmm. because they hear me. Mm -hmm. And after putting my the plumb up, set up the plumbing pipe for the, you know, just going ahead and uh, wait behind it and everything now. When I finish this at the police border and then start dialing. She runs a small set of lodgings in Inagua. For a long time, she advertised her rooms, but was unfortunately haunted by a huge deficit. They refused to give me cable. Mm. They said that, that they needed more people in the area. And no way I could get service from them. So. Well, that has now changed thanks to BTC. What is it meant for business to have IPTV or BTC TV? That means a plus because after a long day or, you know, going around, you come back home, you want to relax and watch something rather than, you know, just listening to the radio. Sometimes you want to see something, you know. BTC came in and installed the, the test run mm -hmm. from then. And I had no, no problems with it. So how do you know what's going on? Now she's watching ZNS TV for the first time and loving it, along with some other new found favorites. Keishla Adderley for the BTC Island Connection.